Ukraine is not a monarchy, but what if I told you that, in addition to its president, it also has at least two kings, and until recently also a prince. Meet the king of Donbas, the chocolate king, and the prince of darkness. In reality, these are not royals, but Ukrainian oligarchs. But who can actually be called an oligarch? According to Ukrainian legislation, an oligarch is somebody who exercises significant influence on media, participates in politics, owns monopolies, and whose net worth is more than 70 million dollars. In the 90s, oligarchs got their hands on certain assets that were privatized after the collapse of the Soviet Union. This is what allowed them to amass their fortune. How are oligarchs doing now during Russia's full-scale war? Do they still enjoy the same wealth and political influence. My name is Natalia Chukutun, I'm a reporter at the Kyiv Independent, let's talk about it. And if you want to watch more videos like this, please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. A train car with a gold interior, a private chapel and separate rooms for fur coats, paintings and Christmas ornaments. These are just some of the things that belonged not to a king or a queen, but to one Ukrainian oligarch and former lawmaker dubbed the Prince of Darkness in Ukraine's politics. His name is Viktor Medvedchuk. In the early 2000s, Medvedchuk was the chief of staff of Ukraine's second president, Leonid Kuchma, and managed the 2004 election campaign of the pro-Russian presidential candidate Viktor Yanukovych, who would end up fleeing Ukraine after the Euromaidan revolution in 2014. Unsurprisingly, he has had close ties with Russian dictator Vladimir Putin, just like Yanukovych. In 2004, as he was managing the campaign of Putin's chosen Ukrainian presidential candidate, Medvedchuk even made the Russian president his daughter's godfather. For decades, Medvedchuk was Putin's man in Ukraine, parroting Russian propaganda and lobbying for closer ties with Russia. There will be no NATO in Ukraine. We already have four and a half million signatures for the referendum. As Russia started its war against Ukraine in 2014, Medvedchuk was one of the negotiators between the Kremlin and Ukraine. He is believed to have owned, through a proxy, a media empire that included three nationwide TV channels, News One, Channel 112 and Zik, which used to describe Russia's war against Ukraine as a civil war, spread lies about the rise of neo-Nazis in Ukraine and question Ukraine's independence. We have no independence. Ukraine and the concept of independence are, unfortunately, antonyms now. In 2021, President Volodymyr Zelensky banned these TV channels and confiscated some of Medvedchuk's assets, including a pipeline transporting Russian oil to Europe that reportedly belonged to Medvedchuk. Medvedchuk was later put under house arrest on treason charges for trying to extract natural resources from Russian-occupied Crimea in 2021 and later also for organizing coal supplies to Ukraine's state-owned enterprises from Russian-occupied areas in the east of Ukraine. This, of course, had an impact on his fortune. In 2021, it was estimated at $620 million, making Viktor Medvedchuk Ukraine's 12th richest person, according to Forbes Ukraine. He owned a yacht and two aircraft worth almost $200 million. A Ukrainian court seized this property along with 55 apartments and houses, 30 plots of land and 26 cars owned by the Medvedchuk family. Now he is not on the Forbes list as the publication excludes individuals stripped of their Ukrainian citizenship or suspected of treason like Medvedchuk. So where is he now? Along with 55 Russian prisoners of war, Medvedchuk was sent to Russia in September last year in exchange for 215 Ukrainian soldiers, including the leadership of the Azovstal garrison that held Mariupol to the end. Unlike Medvedchuk, the next man in our ranking might not be so lucky and could actually be put in prison to stay. At the height of his power, this man governed Ukraine's Dnipropetrovsk Oblast, owned Ukraine's leading bank and ran an influential media empire. He also was a key backer of Zelensky's presidential campaign. His name is Igor Kolomoisky. An engineer by profession, Kolomoisky gained his wealth in five key industries – metals, hydrocarbons, banking, media and aviation. In the early 90s, together with his partner Hennady Bogolyubov, Kolomoisky founded Privat Bank, which became Ukraine's biggest private bank and his largest asset. But in 2016, independent regulators uncovered a huge money laundering scheme, which cost Privat Bank at least $5.5 billion in losses. 
After the scandal, cases were brought against Kolomoisky in Ukraine, the UK, the US, Israel, Switzerland and Cyprus. Private bank in turn was nationalized by Ukraine as part of a cleanup of its banking sector. Things seem to be getting better for Kolomoisky in 2019, when his media empire backed the presidential bid of Zelensky. Earlier, his channel OnePlus One aired the show Servant of the People. It starred Zelensky as a high school history teacher who inadvertently gets elected as Ukraine's president after a viral video had shown him ranting against corruption in the country. Zelensky's critics alleged he was in Kolomoisky's pocket, but it seems like the oligarch's influence over Zelensky is not as big as many thought. Last year, Zelensky reportedly stripped Ihor Kolomoisky of his Ukrainian citizenship. If this did indeed happen, he could be extradited to the US, where the FBI is investigating him for possible financial crimes. In 2021, Kolomoisky was Ukraine's fourth richest person, with a fortune estimated at $1.8 billion, according to Forbes Ukraine. Since Kolomoisky is reportedly no longer a citizen of Ukraine, he's not on the Forbes list anymore. Just like Viktor Medvedchuk. Recently, Kolomoisky was put under arrest, charged with money laundering and fraud. According to Ukraine's security service, he smuggled out of the country nearly $14 million between 2013 and 2020. He's the second oligarch in Ukraine to be behind bars, after Viktor Medvedchuk. If you want to learn more about Kolomoisky, please make sure to listen to episode 25 of our podcast This Week in Ukraine. The next tycoon in our list came close to being arrested, just like Kolomoisky, but has escaped this fate so far. This is Petro Poroshenko, Ukraine's former president. He's now an opposition lawmaker and Zelensky's political rival. A long-term politician and lawmaker who's moved between parties, he swept into power as Ukraine's president in election held after the pro-Western Euromaidan revolution in 2014. In the 90s, he sold cocoa beans and later created a confectionery company known as Roshan, using a part of his last name is the brand's name. It earned him a large fortune and the nickname Chocolate King, though later, in addition to his confectionery business, he also branched out into other sectors, like agriculture, media and banking. Since the late 90s, he has held political positions both in pro-Western and pro-Russian governments. For example, he was the foreign minister under Viktor Yushchenko, the leader of the Orange Revolution in 2004 and the economy and trade minister under Viktor Yanukovych. During Poroshenko's presidency from 2014 to 2019, Ukraine's army underwent reforms. The country also received a visa-free travel regime with the EU and Ukraine's Orthodox Church gained independence from Moscow. Yet not everything was smooth and sweet, as Poroshenko and his top allies often found themselves exposed in media investigations, including the so-called Panama Papers. Leaked documents suggested that in 2014 Poroshenko set up a secret offshore company in the British Virgin Islands to move his business and thereby evade taxes. Poroshenko denied these accusations. When Zelensky took office, cases against Poroshenko began piling up. In the most recent one, he was charged with treason for allegedly helping Russia's proxies in Donetsk and Luhansk oblasts to sell coal to Kyiv in 2014-2015. A court arrested his assets, including several flats in Vinnytsia and Kyiv, a house in Kyiv oblast, land plots and shares in private companies. Yet this hasn't happened to Poroshenko's primary asset, Roshan. He managed to save it by transferring the ownership to his eldest son, Oleksiy, in 2019. In 2021, he also said he had sold his two TV stations, Premui and Channel 5. Yet, based on the channel's agenda, he appears to still influence their coverage. And what about Poroshenko's fortune? According to Forbes, he is no longer a billionaire. At the start of Russia's full-scale war against Ukraine, his fortune was estimated at $1.6 billion. By the end of 2022, it had fallen to $730 million. The next oligarch on our list lost not only some of his fortune, but he also cannot currently return to Ukraine. Yet, Russia's war has nothing to do with it. 
This is Dmitro Firtosh, a gas and media magnate who has lived in Vienna since 2014. Firtosh, once an ally of pro-Russian ex-president Viktor Yanukovych, used to buy Russian gas and then sell it in Ukraine. The gas industry allowed him to accumulate much of his wealth, but later brought him a lot of trouble. In August, Ukraine's Economic Security Bureau seized more than $200 million worth of his assets, as he had been charged with organizing a scheme to steal gas from the state. Since 2021, he has also been under sanctions imposed by Ukraine's National Security and Defense Council. He was accused of selling titanium products that ended up being used by Russian military firms. Yet this is not his biggest problem. Firtosh faces 50 years in prison in the US, where he's wanted on racketeering and corruption charges for allegedly paying bribes in India to mine titanium. Firtosh allegedly used US financial institutions to pay the bribes. He denies any wrongdoing and is now staying in Vienna to avoid extradition. In 2014, he was briefly arrested in Austria, but later released after posting a $136 million bail. As of 2021, his fortune was estimated at $420 million, according to Forbes. As of May 2023, it shrank to $180 million, Forbes writes. In particular, his Azad plant in the city of Severodonetsk in Luhansk Oblast was destroyed by Russian forces. Meet Viktor Pinchuk, a steel magnate and the son-in-law of former Ukrainian president Leonid Kuchma. And as you will no doubt be surprised, he rose to prominence during Kuchma's rule between 1994 and 2005, gaining his wealth via non-transparent privatization tenders. In 1990, Pinchuk founded Interpipe, a company producing metal products, most notably steel pipes. In 2019, five years into Russia's war against Ukraine, this very company continued to sell pipes and railway wheels to Russia, having earned $54 million during the first five months of 2019. Moreover, before the full-scale invasion, Pinchuk was pushing the idea of a painful compromise with Russia. Premier shouldn't get in the way of a deal that ends the war, he wrote in an article for the Wall Street Journal in 2016. Yet everything changed after the full-scale invasion. He called Russia an aggressor state and Putin a war criminal. Compared to the assets of the other oligarchs on our list, his businesses have been least affected by the war. According to Forbes Ukraine, his fortune fell by 15% and is now estimated at $2.2 billion. Forbes explains that this is due to the fact that two-thirds of his wealth is in the former real estate in foreign countries, including including a top and home in London. In addition to that, he also owns a broadcasting group of several TV stations. Through this media empire, he was believed to have helped Kuchma to dodge blame for the murder of journalist Georgi Gongadze in the year 2000. Along with his TV channels, Pinchuk also owns a contemporary art center, he organizes the annual YES conference and Ukrainian breakfast in Davos, as well as provides financial support to students. This, among other things, helps him portray himself as Ukraine's most renowned philanthropist. This is Ukraine's richest man, Renat Akhmetov, the son of a coal miner turned the king of Donbas. At the heart of his vast business empire is control of large industries, including coal mining and energy production and distribution. In the 2000s, Akhmetov was even a member of Ukraine's parliament, representing the pro-Russian party of the regions. He was known to never attend the hearings. He was a key backer of Viktor Yanukovych, head of the party and Ukraine's pro-Russian president in 2010-2014. As Yanukovych fled Ukraine and Russia started its war in 2014, Akhmetov found himself in the middle of a scandal. He was accused of not taking an active role in repelling Russian-backed militants or even having ties with them, which he denied. Metov is the proud owner of a mining and steel giant, thermal power plants, renewables, the Shakhtar Donetsk football club, and until recently one of Ukraine's leading TV channels, as well as many other assets. In February 2022, his fortune was estimated at $13.7 billion, according to Forbes Ukraine. But as Russia started its full-scale war against Ukraine, the 57-year-old tycoon lost more than half of his net worth. It now sits at 
5.7 billion dollars, according to Forbes. Among his most painful losses are the Mariupol-based Azovstal steel plant, one of the largest in Europe, and Ukraine's second largest metallurgical enterprise, the Ilyich Iron and Steel Works. They were severely damaged after Russian strikes and fierce fighting in Mariupol last year. Now the area is occupied by Russia. In total, around 70 enterprises owned by Renato Akhmetov have been destroyed, damaged or occupied by Russia, Liga Media outlet reported. So as you see, Russia's full-scale invasion has taken a toll on Ukraine's oligarchs, not only on their fortunes, but also on their political power. In particular, this has been the case with Moscow-friendly tycoons. They have either been arrested or are simply laying low.